I can't believe our school has decided to film a second virtual assembly. I know, right? It's like I'm finally getting the hang of things. Well, that's good. Because we're rolling. We're rolling? We're rolling. Oh, oh, we're, we're rolling. Well, welcome everyone to our second virtual assembly. And I am very, 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 We get it. You're very, very, very excited. I can. Well, let's take a look what Thorn Park has been up to these past three weeks. We gather today in this special place to continue our learning journey together. We acknowledge Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people as the traditional custodians of, of the land upon which we meet. We pay our respects to the elders of the past, present and future and acknowledge their spiritual connection to the country. Twenty years ago, hundreds of thousands of Australians of all backgrounds came together in unity and voted with their feet to walk together for reconciliation over bridges right across Australia. We were in it together then. We're in this together now. Find out how you can be part of National Reconciliation Week 2020 at reconciliation.org.au. Every year, National Reconciliation Week is celebrated from the 27th of May to the 3rd of June. It is a time dedicated to building positive, respectful relationships between Australians and celebrating Indigenous culture. Every year, there is a theme connected to National Reconciliation Week, which reinforces the idea that we all have a part to play. The theme for 2020, In This Together, is a tribute to that. There are two important historical milestones that fall on National Reconciliation Week, the anniversary of the 1967 referendum and the High Court Marbo decision. What was the 1967 referendum about? On the 27th of May, 1967, Australians voted in favour of two changes to the Australian Constitution that discriminated against the Indigenous population. The first change meant that Indigenous Australians would be subject to the same laws as the rest of the population. This meant that Aboriginal people and Torres Strait Islanders could be protected by the same laws as the rest of the population, whereas previously their rights were inconsistent between states. The second change meant that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people were included in the census. This was significant because it gave them visibility and access to essential funding and services they were previously deprived of. It's important to mention that these changes demonstrate a positive step towards reconciliation along the road to equality and justice. National Reconciliation Week is a time dedicated towards bringing Australia closer to that goal of unity while reflecting on the struggles of the past. What was the High Court Marbo decision? When Captain James Cook and the British landed on Australian soil, they declared the land terra nullius, no one's land. Such a declaration denied that the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people already had occupation of the land. However, it was on the 3rd of June 1992 that the High Court of Australia reviewed this decision, deciding that it had been wrong for a terra nullius to have been declared. This recognised and said the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island people are the rightful owners of the land, which was theirs long before the British arrived. This decision was called the Marbo Decision and is one of the key events celebrated by National Reconciliation Week. What does reconciliation mean? By definition, Reconciliation refers to the mending of a damaged relationship. In the context of Australian history, it's the process of creating a just society that honours and respects the Indigenous population. By nurturing these relationships and working towards a fairer society, the hope is to create a better and more unified Australia for everyone. Today's assembly showcases themes around reconciliation with inc inclusivity. We are all in this together. Let's take a look at how Thornton Park Primary School has been celebrating this week. Oh wow, sorry, I was busy staring at the intriguing artworks made by Miss Pass's class. They are just so detailed. The artwork involved drawing crosshatch patterns on Australian animals. Let's take a look at the brilliant pieces of work. 
Last week we started our visual arts unit on Aboriginal artwork. We often associate dot painting with Aboriginal art, but there are so many more different techniques used in Aboriginal artwork. Some techniques we're going to learn about this time are sound drawing, rock art, body painting, bar painting and x-ray art. The first technique we learnt about was cross hatching. Cross hatching is a common technique used in artworks from the northern part of Australia. Cross hatching, also known as rock, was originally created using grass reeds or even human hair. Nowadays, the fine strokes seen in cross hatching are usually painted with bush brushes. Rock artworks are referred to as cross hatching because of the technique of many parallel lines crossing over. A typical large painting can take an artist up to a year to complete. Cross hatching artworks represent na na native animals such as sea creatures, marsupials, and reptiles. We have attempted our own cross hatching artworks using paper and textile. First, we choose a native Australian animal to draw an outline of. Then we got to work on our cross hatching. To make the parts of our artwork appear darker, we needed to draw the lines and crisscrosses very close together. To make parts of our artwork seem lighter, our lines needed to be further apart. Here are some of our cross hatching artwork. Thanks for listening. Why do you keep saying that? Because Mr. C's class is saying it's very Ghana. Does that have it on video? Yeah, come on, let's go see. I believe that Reconciliation Week is important because it's the one day we can come together with the Aboriginals and make peace. And hopefully one day everyone will be able to have peace without a special day. However, Reconciliation Week and National Sorry Day is about saying sorry to the horrible things that happened to the Aboriginals, especially the Stolen Generation. For those of you who don't know what the Stolen Generation is it's when um, Aboriginal children were taken away from their families and made to go to church, school, and were were made to live like non-indigenous, like a non-indigenous person. I think Reconciliation Week is amazing, and I think it's a way that non-indigenous, indigenous, and Aboriginal people get to make peace with each other. I have learned that anyone, including non-Indigenous people, can do an acknowledgement to country, but only Aboriginal people can do a welcome to country. A welcome to country is done by a traditional owner, custodian or elder for a particular local region. This can be done by speech, dance, song or ceremony. An acknowledgement of country is an opportunity to acknowledge and pay respect to the traditional owners of this land. Thank you. What I believe Reconciliation Week is all about. I think that Reconciliation Week is all about respecting the Indigenous people and remembering not to judge people about the way they are or not judging them by their skin types. 
Welcome to Country. Welcome to Country is only done by Indigenous people. For most of it, they use Aboriginal language. Then they translate it to English after for the other people that don't speak the Ghana language to understand. Acknowledgement to Country. An acknowledgement to Country is something we do to pay respect to the Aboriginal people. And we do this because we are on their land, so we have to acknowledge that. Anybody can do an acknowledgement to Country because it is not welcoming people to the country. It is acknowledging that we are that what land we are on. We do an acknowledgement to country at gatherings or even at school assemblies. I believe that Reconciliation Week is important because it shows that we recognize Indigenous people and that we're sorry about what happened to them in the past. An acknowledgement to country is extremely important because it shows that we respect Indigenous people and we recognize their culture. A welcome to country is just as important. Anyone can do an acknowledgement acknowledgement to country but a welcome to country can only be done by an indigenous elder because they are welcoming us to their country i believe that it is very important that we recognize and respect the indigenous people's culture because they are the first australians on behalf of australia i'm sorry indigenous people and thank you for being so kind and understanding i believe that reconciliation week is about to build trust between non-Indigenous and Indigenous Australians. Um, an acknowledgement to country is allowed to be done by a non-Indigenous or Indigenous Australian. And here's an example. We acknowledge the land that we meet on today is the, is the traditional land of the Wadjuk people um, and their spiritual and relationships with their country are still important to the living Wajak people today. Um, uh, welcome to the country is only allowed to be done by a traditional elder or a elder or a traditional owner. I believe that Reconciliation Week is important for all Australians to know about because Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have been put through torture and deserve a huge apology. They have lost their children in the past when non-Indigenous people stole them and forced them to believe in their religion and to go to school. It is now called the Stolen Generation. Indigenous people need to have a day that tells other Australian cultures about their losses. All Australians should say sorry. I have also learnt that a welcome to country can only be done by an Indigenous elder, custodian or traditional owner. It can be done in the form of speech, song, dance or ceremony as in an acknowledgement to country can be done by anyone and is normally done at an important event such as meetings, assemblies and more. We do an acknowledgement to country at our assemblies. We need to learn about Indigenous culture to increase awareness about their culture. This will help us create a more united Australia that celebrates and embraces our first Australians. Ms McLaughlin's class have been learning to use keyword signs to promote communication in the classroom. They've all been working hard at learning this new mode of communication and would like to showcase a song they have been learning using keyword signs. Zero, one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Using keyword sign language is so awesome because it's so inclusive. So are the house points because anyone can earn points for their teams. Now the house captains are going to tell us who is in the lead at this point in time. In third place, we have green on 118 points. In second place, we have gold on 128 points. In equal first place, we have blue and red on 129 points. Oh yeah, have you received a value towards this turn? No, I haven't. Actually, I wonder who's going to get them this week. Well, Napier's about to read them out. Quick, let's go before we miss it. For creativity, we've got Melanie, Evie, Lisa, Leo, Stefania, Beatrice, Kayla, Nicholas, Ella and Amelia. For excellence, we have St Stephanie, Jania, Cooper, Anthony, Danny, Asha, Caitlin, Sophia, Joe, Grace, Bianca, Sanvi, Nicholas, Michaela, Melania. For resilience, we have Dante, Ronav, Billy, Charlie, Flynn, Hannah, Olivia, Chloe, Andreas, Hugo, Tina, Oscar, Anna, Annabelle, and Rovan. For respect, we have Tyson, Henry, Kevin, and Oliver. Miss Dora and Miss Kelvin would now like to share some news about what has been happening at Thornton Park Primary School over the past few weeks. Welcome everyone to the Leadership Corner. Actually, it's our office. And we'd like to talk about acts of kindness and if you're a bucket filler or a bucket dipper. All our students are trying to show acts of kindness, being respectful, showing manners, and just being nice to each other. So that way we can get through um, this next section of the COVID restrictions and hopefully have everyone back on board soon. Um, I want to thank everyone for the outside parking and social distancing that I'm seeing now on the footpath and uh, as more students are coming in they're really bouncing into school not assisted, very organised, very independent and very resilient which is fantastic. Um, and I'm really pleased that the parents have had a lot of committee meetings uh, through Webex and so our parents are became, becoming a lot IT savvy as well as thinking that this may be the forum that we may use in the future which is a lot very convenient for parents with children at home so we can communicate from home to school and vice versa. So um, a reminder too of our interviews so unfortunately we still can't do face-to-face -face interviews so book a time to call your teacher or arrange through your email a Webex meeting that you can have a video uh, call so that's another way of communicating uh, all teachers will contact you uh, so that way we can discuss um, your child's progress and a reminder that pupil free day is on Tuesday the teachers will be on board planning lessons uh, and working um, through our priorities on our site improvement plan so we'll be on site um, OSH is available for students as well on Tuesday. So we're wishing you a safe and happy long weekend. And I want to pass over to Lindy now with her announcement for some um, community fundraising. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as you can see, I'm wearing red. Um, we've asked our students to wear red on Friday for our Red Shield appeal. So um, we've done this in the past, but this year because of the um, restrictions, um, we are um, fundraising uh, digitally this time. Everything's gone digital, even fundraising. So at this point in time, we've reached about two thirds of our goal. Our goal this year is 500, um, which is more than last year. Last year, I think we raised about $340. We're almost at the, we're about at the 320 mark, um, but by the time you see this, hopefully we've surpassed it. 
So um, we thank everybody so far who has donated. We look forward to seeing our students dressing in red in an accessory or a t-shirt or um, even some high tops. Whatever you have that's red is fine. Um, but let's keep the, that fundraising going and see if we can even surpass our goal. So thank you very much. And um, we look forward to a, a great fundraising event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching our second